genetics are the blueprint of the entire body in each cell. By the time it differentiates during its embryonic transformation, it either becomes a liver cell or a skin cell or a brain cell or something like that. So once it differentiates, that's all it will do. What the cell does, what it expresses genetically, depends on the environment. If I take a stem cell and I stick it into a heart, it's going to become a heart. If I stick it into the liver, it'll become a liver. If I stick it into the brain, it'll become brain. So remember, what is determining it? Is it the nucleus, the DNA? No, the nucleus is the response. It's the library of potential responses. What determines what a cell does is its environment. It's epigenetics, and epi just means around. Epidermis is around, above, skin. Dermis is skin. Epi, that's all it means. Now, the job of the membranes, the way that we get information is through our senses. And senses are appendages of the skin. And so the interpretation of our environment, our ability to I interact with our environment, is determined by our senses. The six obvious senses, skin and sound and smell, taste, all that. And keep in mind, too, it'll be more relevant in a few minutes. There are three layers in an embryo. There's called the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. They become different parts of the body. Well, there are only two structures that emerge from the ectoderm, and that is our skin and our nervous system, okay? So our brain, our nervous system is ectoderm, and our skin is ectoderm, that's it. So, interesting. So when you think of the senses, like the eyes and all that, these are ectodermal skin structures, but they are directly connected to the brain, right? Because the eye, the light comes in, goes back to this part of the brain, and we have vision, okay? So, but it's still skin. Anyway, in effect, what we can say is that our skin is interpreting the environment. It's interpreting what? Electromagnetic frequencies, sound frequencies. You can realize, like for example, cats and dogs are seeing a, a wider part of the electromagnetic spectrum than we, than we are. Okay, is it not there? No, we just don't see it, right? And so I, I just want you to keep in mind that it's really the apparatus we have that interprets it. So, um, and the same is going on with the membranes of the cell. The cell has receptors, over 100,000 receptors and the cell can only bring in information for which it has a receptor. If it has no estrogen receptors, it doesn't matter how much estrogen is in the environment, it can't respond to it, it can't produce what's necessary, so the estrogen becomes irrelevant. Okay, so it's those receptors that determine what the cell is going to do. In normal physiology, we have what's called upregulation and downregulation, and that is, in simple terms, that the cell responds to the environment that it's in by upregulating or downregulating a particular uh, process. And it does that by turning genes on and off, expressing and unexpressing genes. So there's too much glucose because you're eating too much things that turn into glucose. It signals the nucleus to stop making so many insulin receptors, the cell becomes insulin resistant, what we call insulin resistant. This is great news because that means whatever condition you have now doesn't have to be tomorrow.